It's been just over five years since the ninth series or season of the revived series of Doctor Who first aired, it's 35th overall, which I would consider to be one of, if not my favorite season of the revival. After the mixed bag of Series 8, Series 9 offers a much more rich experience with a well-balanced Tars duo, some nice payoffs to plot points that had popped up in the Stephen Moffat era, and some strong thematic work and foreshadowing amongst a solid set of stories. And while not without its shortcomings, I do firmly believe as an overall package, it delivers more than some other seasons, though obviously your mileage may vary. Today, however, I'd like to talk about one specific scene in particular, and that is the Doctor's entrance in Essex 1138 in The Magician's Apprentice, playing electric guitar on a bloody tank. Now this scene does appear generally well liked based on the response to the upload on the official Doctor Who YouTube chat, but there does seem to be a fairly intense backlash to this scene from certain movies. This is the step that went too far. This is the moment where many viewers left and either never came back or waited for Capaldi to leave the show. Yeah, this moment is so try-hard, so desperate, and just poorly executed. Are you gonna elaborate on why? No? Alright then. To these people, this scene could almost be seen as the equivalent of Luke throwing away his lightsaber or drinking the green milk in The Last Jedi. Essentially, it's a moment that not only insults the character, but also wastes the audience's time with awkward comedy. Now, I can't really speak too much on others' enjoyment, as that is pretty subjective, but I figured I would go over why I believe the scene works for myself. To start, we gotta look at the context of the situation. At the beginning of this season premiere, we start off with the Doctor attempting to save a boy that turns out to be a young Davros. This cold open ends with young Davros still begging to be saved, and the Doctor staring at shock. After the opening theme, we cut to a montage of Colin and Sarf going around time and space looking for the Doctor. This move effectively builds up anticipation for the Doctor's return, and further makes us want to know what exactly went down with him and young Davos. It's a move not dissimilar to Moffat's previous episode, A Good Man Goes to War. The anticipation builds further when Clara is brought into the story, which confirms she is not with him, and encounters the not-dead Missy, who says she was told to bring the confession dial for the occasion of the Doctor dying which we can assume at this point has something to do with Sarf and Davros. This neatly tells us that in whatever series of events the Doc is involved in now, he believes there is a good chance he is going to die, which builds an expectation in the viewer's mind of a serious situation. The two in unit work to figure out the Doc's location, and Claire postulates he would go out with a party rather than a crisis, and so the pair head off to the past. Once in Essex, Missy suggests looking for anachronisms to hint at the Doctor's whereabouts, and that's when they hear the start of the rock music and the Doctor rolls into the arena on top of a bloody tank. Look at Clara's expression here, that's just perfect. Even with Clara's forewarning earlier on, this is certainly not the kind of behavior that one would anticipate a being expecting his upcoming death to engage in, nor would it be what we'd have expected from the 12th Doctor given his attitude in the prior series. Series 9 can almost be considered a soft reboot of the 12th Doctor's character as he steps away from the more reserved, alien characterization he had, had into a more caring, outlandish individual, and this scene is just a big old mission statement for this rejigged version of the character. I mean, it's not enough to be playing electric guitar centuries early, you gotta do it on a bloody tank with smoke everywhere. Some might consider this a bit over the top, but sometimes you just gotta pull some outlandish stuff like this every now and then and the unimpressed look from his pal Boris, who was also in the Doctor's meditation, has a nice counterbalance to the madness. Also, the Doctor's insistence that he was just bringing this guitar for an axe fight, the tank was for his fish, and that he somehow won a sword fight with a daffodil, fits the theme that the Doctor is just not giving much of a damn right now, and will do or say whatever the hell he likes. The use of a tank here also feels appropriate being this two-part feature the Daleks, described as Trigger happy mini tanks. And we'll see what is arguably a light parallel to this entrance when the Doctor rides in on their creator's chair in the second part. In both scenarios, he takes a transport symbolic of danger and twists it with his own sense of light for Valerie. Admit it! You've all had this exact nightmare. The axe in question is a nice way to reflect Peter Capaldi's musical career, and it effectively establishes its start as a recurring staple in his last two seasons. And I think it's neat to have the Doctor have a regular instrument again after the Seven Doctor's spoons. But the Second Doctor's recorder remains the OG instrument. The scene also features the informal introduction of the sonic sunglasses, which at this point just appear to be sunglasses. But he wouldn't necessarily assume he had a sonic device on him given his 11th Doctor screwdriver was left with Kid Davros, but the glasses' sonic nature reveal in The Witch's Familiar ends up retroactively showing he was always prepared somewhat 
as neither Davros or the Daleks suspected in foul play. It is worth noting that he is still spoiling his hoodie as well as his longer, fabulous hair that we saw from the opening teaser. This outfit will in fact be Capaldi's primary outfit for the majority of this season, at least until he gets his spiffy belt coat. While the Doctor suggests to Clara that his outlandish behavior may be a result of his embodying past incarnations as part of the party, the fact that he's wearing the same outfit in both scenes tells us that it's probably not been absurdly long since the Davros encounter for him, though with the Doc a long time is relative, but also that this notable shift in outfit and do didn't start because of his expecting death. This ties into the whole soft reboot idea, but we can also assume that this may have been a result of how his character was shifting his disposition a bit after his speech in Death in Heaven, and wanted to kickstart a new phase in his and Claire's relationship in Last Christmas after all the strife they had caused each other. So while some feel his behavior here is a bit unprecedented, there is at least enough legwork in hindsight to at least close the gap a little. And ultimately, even if it is a bit of a drastic shift, I just find myself enjoying this stage of 12's tenure more than the previous. He just feels a lot more fun and lively, and I feel Capaldi and the writers were just more comfortable with the way his characterization is framed around this time. Though it does often seem the case that a Doctor's second season is where their character is more solidified. And thankfully, this insertion of jovialness will not take away from the strong serious moments that will come in the rest of the season. Both the goofiness and the drama complement each other as much as they contrast one another, and are both interesting in the reflection of moments in Series 8. There's some other neat stuff to go into, like how the Doctor plays a pretty woman for Clara and or Missy, enlisting his various exploits in Essex and all the plot stuff that happens, but that starts to move away from the specifics of the Doctor's entrance itself, so it's probably best to just leave things here. I find the scene just really effective in terms of the overall story structure and what it says about the Doctor at this point in his life, which benefits not only this story, but the season overall. You wouldn't think there would be much class in just barging in with a bloody tank, but sometimes, it can help to just listen between the notes.